Welcome to a very special Greetings from Quarantine episode of Wine, Hops and Road Stops. You are checking out the Latimer Compound. Yes, this is my bar and we're stuck inside here until the coronavirus goes away apparently. So uh, what better to do is talk about drinking and how this all affects you. Now, I know I made an announcement on Facebook and through the company website that season five will be starting very soon. Well, we're going to have to wait a little bit. Uh, we're all fine. We just got to wait until this crisis is over. And then we will bring you all kind of great wines, and beers to try, and food, restaurants. We're going to go to a lot of restaurants in season five uh, because they need your support and our support more than ever. So if you like what we're doing here, of course, facebook.com slash wine hops and road stops is our Facebook page. We've got some big news coming out of Bethlehem. Black River Farms, they're temporarily altering their distillery to make hand sanitizer for first responders and for uh, healthcare workers, everyone that needs it. So here's Kristen Bozinski from Black River Farms. Hey, Jeff. Uh, hey, everyone. My name's Kristen. I am the strategic branding and marketing manager for War Dog Spirits and Black River Farms. We are in Bethlehem. Uh, we're a full distillery and also a um, full estate vineyard down here in Bethlehem. We hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. Uh, recently here at War Dog, we decided that we wanted to do something to help during this crazy time here in our world. Uh, and one thing that we obviously can do here is make alcohol. So alcohol can make hand sanitizer. And hand sanitizer is of course, uh, very hard to come by these days, especially for our first responders and medical personnel. And we have so far handed out about 1200 bottles of hand sanitizer to police officers, emergency personnel, firefighters, um, healthcare workers, you name it. We've also had some people who are um, yeah, just residents who really, really need some. Um, maybe they own their own business and uh, they're out in people's homes still. So they've been uh, giving us some donations and that has also helped and is going a long way um, in the process of, of making this because we are giving out this sanitizer free of charge to all of those who are on the front lines. I'm a military veteran, and I think it's my duty as a citizen military veteran to help all that I can in the time of need. The country really needs to pull together and help each other out in situations like this. Um, also, you can check us out on our website, which is www.blackriverfarms.com. We're also on social media. Uh, on Facebook, we are Black River Farms, and on Instagram, we are Black River Farms, and we also have one for War Dog Spirits. So we hope you'll check us out, and also, we're still selling our spirits and our wine um, for takeout only, so you can call in orders, and you can pick them up. I might be a little far for some of you in Bethlehem, but we are able to... Um, mail wine only, no spirits, but we can mail wine within the state of Pennsylvania. So we can do that for you. If you still would like to get your spirits and some wine, uh, we can help you out with that. We got spirits here at War Dog Spirits and Black River Farms. So big thank you to Black River Farms doing a great job down there. So if you need some wine, support them, please. Now, when I first thought about doing this episode, I Made the call out to you guys, the fans, to do something. I asked fans for a video of what you're doing during quarantine. So, after the break, don't go away. After the break, when we come back, we're going to check out some of those videos. There's more Wine Hops and Road Stops coming up next. Welcome back to Wine Hops and Road Stops. I'm your host, Jeff Benoma, and I am stuck in quarantine just like you are, just like pretty much the whole world is. So, when you're stuck in quarantine, what are you going to do? Well, because I'm easy to make drinks, first of all. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a uh, white trash margarita. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. And I'm going to turn to, you know, one of the first craft beers I ever drank and still pretty much my go-to IPA. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. That's a Dogfish Head 60 Minute. And I'm going to show you a little bit on how we could take, uh, you know, Guinness and uh, amp it up a little bit with a little bit of a little bit of stuff on the rim there. That's uh, some graham crackers, graham crackers and Guinness. That's pretty cool. So 
without further ado, let's start with this beer. Now this is Dogfish Head 60 Minute. You all know that probably if you're into IPAs, you know Dogfish Head. This is like their flagship beer. This and Dogfish Head 90 Minute. And it's my go-to beer. And I made sure before I uh, locked myself up, me, my wife, and daughter into quarantine, made sure we had some Dogfish Head. Uh, this, uh, hmm, it's a great IPA for anyone who really likes craft beer. This is the go-to because it's not super hoppy. It's dry, but not too dry. It's kind of in the middle as far as IPAs are now. Like when it first came out, it was like, it was a crazy beer. It's not too big of a beer, around 6% or so. But if you want to kick it up a little bit, I recommend this one, Lagunitas Maximus. Now that's going to have more of everything in it. That's going to have more hops. It's going to have more malt. It's going to have more of a bitter aftertaste. It's a great beer too from Lagunitas. So here's your go-to beers. Two of them that are not hard to find. If you uh, can go out and get yourself uh, some beers, they're pretty easy to find. Now, next thing we're going to do, I heard about this online. Uh, people are taking Guinness and other kind of stouts and um, putting uh, Oreo cookies on the rim, putting all kind of things on the rim that you think would go good with like a, a stout. Now, this is a, uh, this is a stout, which is a nitro. So we got to pop it and slam it down and let it, let it make itself kind of pour it in there real fast. And uh, Guinness, uh, you know, I, I've said some things about Guinness before. I, you know, it's not my favorite stout, but it's a good go-to stout. And again, it's easy to find. Okay, now this, this is normal Guinness. Hmm. A little bit of graham cracker on the rim there. It has a nice little taste to it. That's, um, that's really interesting. So, you know, you can find, find this stuff online. You know, anywhere, there's all kind of neat little things you could do uh, with, with, with beers. And, and one of the things that's getting more and more popular is, you know, putting some stuff around the rim. Like I've seen Oreo cookie, I've seen a graham cracker. Mm. Graham cracker has a nice little taste to it. Okay, so next thing we got, final thing we got for you guys today is <laughs> what I like to call the white trash margarita. I'm going to use a shot glass for this to actually measure it. My Elvis shot glass, Viva Las Vegas. We'll probably be getting back there soon. All right, so everyone has some kind of tequila sitting around the house, I'm sure. We, for some reason, have an overabundance of Jose Cuervo. So that's what we're going to use. One shot, pour that bad boy in, and get some lemonade. We actually have some pink lemonade for some reason, but any lemonade will work. Just pour it right in. Two, three ice cubes. There you go. Mm. You can salt the rim if you want. I usually don't. But there you go. Beautiful white trash margarita. <laughs> I'm sure you have lemonade or lemonade mix somewhere in the house. Everyone has a ball of tequila laying around. Cuervo or some kind of tequila, any kind of tequila will work. Okay, we're going to take a trip now to visit some old friends. Krugel's George Chandelis, Kevin and Felicia. They are at home, hanging out safe and healthy. And they're going to talk about their homebrew that they made, and a little bit about what you can expect from Krugel's Georgetown Deli. Hi, Jeff. It's Kevin and Felicia from Krugel's Georgetown Deli and Beer. Thanks for having us on. And I just wanted to uh, let everybody know we're all safe. We hope you're all safe and healthy. Our store is still open from noon to six every day for hot food takeout. And um, of course, beer takeout as well. We still have plenty of beer. <laughs> um, but uh, it's been a pretty crazy time for all of us. And um, I think that our craft beer fridge supply has gotten a little bit low. And I think that a lot of home brewers have decided to use this time to, to make some beer. I think that there's a lot of that going on right now. I'll bet you there's a lot of you watching right now that have some kind of, some kind of bucket of something bubbling away right now. Now, uh, one of my favorite things to make is a braggot. What's a braggot? <laughs> <laughs> I know it has honey in it. It has honey, that's right. So a braggot is, a braggot is basically a mead that you've put some other ingredients in. So a lot of times it's going to be something like um, people will put grain in a braggot. 
Typically, it's just to pump up the alcohol. So um, normally what I do is I'll put about a pound of honey per gallon of brew, and then I'll add, you know, I'll add some other fruits or, or, or whatever to it. And this time's no different. This time I took six pounds of honey, uh, maybe it was closer to seven pounds, but call it seven pounds of honey and three pounds of blueberries in a bucket. But that wasn't enough for me. What, how do you get more alcohol? More sugar, right? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I added another pound of milk sugar, which I've never made a, I never made a mead with milk sugar before. I thought it might thicken it up a little bit, um, add a little bit more body. I wasn't sure what it was going to do. I threw it in anyway. Um, and then for, uh, just, just to, to top it off, I added another two pounds of regular table sugar. Um, and that's going to, that I'm probably going to get a brew that's, I don't know, in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 percent is about what I expect to get out of it. Uh, but we haven't really tried it yet. It's only been on since March 18th, so it's been three weeks, something like that, that it's it's been bubbling away. Fermentation isn't done, and it is by no means a finished product at this point, <laughs> but we might as well give it a shot. So if my lovely assistant over here could grab the drinks... Well, I... I'm going to hand them to you so I'm proper. <laughs> Not at the bar. It's okay. I gave you the wrong cup, too. Okay. So this is a big old glass of our, of our pandemic hooch. The blue juice. The blue juice. Well, but we brewed kinda, this. It's kind of pink now, actually. It's, it's, it's not getting, blue anymore. It's, getting it's a definitely little bit lightened pink. up a lot. The blueberries added a nice color. Oh. <laughs> She's the, you're not certain really about it? I'm really startled about this. All right. So let's start. Let's, let's give it the official beer taste. So, so let's, um, let's catch the nose. So what, what do we get off the... <laughs> what do we get off the nose? <laughs> A sousant of rotten fruit? <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it, but yeah. Kind of smells a bit like rotting blueberries. But it's not too terrible. What do you think? Carl's not a fan. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use the straw. I'm just going to drink this. Our metal straws. Plastic for me, but reusable plastic. All right. Okay. All right, let's do this. Oh, well, we also need to guess how much alcohol is in it. Why? How are we gonna? There's no way of measuring it. Our faces. So it tastes a little bit like it's, it smells. <laughs> It gets worse. There's it's in your throat. I feel like if you drink this, you're going to be immune to COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, bottoms up. <laughs> vaccine right here. Disclaimer, it's not really a vaccine. Um, not it's not undrinkable. Horrible. Yeah. The second drink is better than <sighs> the first drink. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have... It's strange because there's not really a lot of flavor No, at there's all. not. The blueberries it's didn't just, do much. It's just a strange flavor that doesn't really taste like anything but maybe a smelly shoe. <laughs> it tastes smelly like, shoe. Yeah, it's like your shoes after a long day of work. <laughs> we'll call it a sour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's delicious. Yeah. Okay. So, Jeff, that's how we've been spending our quarantine. Uh, we hope everything is great with you, and we can't wait to see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. We'll be right back with more Wine Hops and Road Stops when we return. We're going to talk about what to watch on TV and some more viewer videos. We'll be right back. Welcome back to 
the Wine Hops and Road Stops right here on WYLN TV 35. It is our greetings from quarantine edition right now. And you know, if you check on our Facebook page often, you see that we're starting to have Facebook viewing parties almost every night. It's kind of random. It's usually between seven and nine at night, sometimes even later, but we're throwing up old episodes and we're all watching them together. It's a great way to pass the time. I mean, what else you gotta do? Watch me, Kevin, Alan, and the whole crew drink and have a good time and think about times, you know, before the quarantine. And of course, look forward to times after, because there's gonna be a time after. So this will all go away eventually. And we're gonna be better people for it, I think. So Facebook party, that's what we're doing, a little Facebook watch party. A couple times a week, like I said, it's random. We'll, we'll send out invites and we can watch some old, um, some old episodes. It's, uh, it's good stuff. What I've been watching, actually, just finished the Tiger King. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say anything. Just watch it. If you need something to binge watch, oh, there's a ton of stuff. And I like to binge watch stuff on Netflix all the time. Ozark, if you haven't seen it, great. Breaking Bad, of course, is very bingeable. Better Call Saul. Stranger Things, how could I forget that, right? There's a ton of stuff on all these streaming services. And, of course, you know, WYLN is still doing new programming all the time. Wellness through Physical Therapy with Ting O. Uh, Let's Talk Cairo with Dr. John Dagenhart and Dr. Stacey Sando. Hey, if you want to get a little crazy, a little weird, a little, a little out there, Soul Spaceman comes on three times a week. It's, that is a locally produced animated show. We have PPW Wrestling. We have a whole bunch of stuff. And speaking of PPW Wrestling... Ernest Julius Kuiper, he joins us right now from PBW to give us a little uh, status on what's going on. Hi there, folks. E. Julius Kuiper here from PPW High Voltage. I'm here at an undisclosed location near the headquarters of the Partiesville Doomsday Militia practicing what military scientists have defined as stealth. Now, folks, even during times of lockdown, you could still represent your favorite independent wrestling federation, PPW, high voltage. Head on over to our YouTube page, PPW Entertainment. All of it's there from the start to now. Everything you want to see when you're in lockdown, it's the only place to go. Folks, head on over to YouTube. Check out our content. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram. Everything you want is right there. I'm out of here. I'll see you later. Now you may know I'm a musician, or at least I try to be a musician. So I reached out to other musician friends of mine and uh, said, hey, send me some videos. Let me know how you guys are staying sane during quarantine. And here's some of those videos. The first one I got was from my friend Bill. And here's his family jamming out in their basement. Now in between jamming, his daughter Rebecca is also studying a kata with uh, her Sifu, Rich Pastorella, as you can see here. Uh, they're passing the time jamming and, you know, keeping themselves healthy and, uh, Rich, I didn't forget. I will call you as soon as this crisis is over. Don't think I forgot about you, Rich. Now, speaking of families that jam together, this next one came from Jason and Megan, all the way from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Two great musicians that have been hosting porch concerts for a while now, and man, they're good. And when they're not doing that, Jason apparently shoots video of his wife playing video games. Why are they crisscrossing me? That's not fair. Next up, it's my old friend, Guitar player virtuoso, Brendan Silliman, he sent me this one. Wow. Let's hear a little bit more of that. Brendan, thank you so, so much. That was great. Another musician pal of mine, Dave Daz Danishevsky from Light Up the Moon, he, um, he's spending his time a little differently. Uh, put down the guitar and he's starting to study some really strange science. Now, to be honest, I've kind of been feeling a little bit like I want to escape all this craziness. So I thought, well, what better time than to work on something I've been wanting to do for a long time? And that is to convert my dining room here into a sort of time machine slash transport type device. Now, how can I explain how this works? All right, well, if any of you remember watching any of the old TV shows like Quantum Leap, Voyagers, Doctor Who, 
my machine functions on precisely the same principle, but different. Anyway, obviously I had to decide which time and place I would like to visit. Well, myself being a huge fan of Sherlock Holmes and really anything to do with Victorian era England, circa the mid to late 1800s, it was an obvious choice. So, without further ado, let's give this thing a shot. What do you say? Okay, here goes. <laughs> Ah, hello, Jeffrey. Here I am, right here on the streets of London, in merry old England, in the year 1853, because why not? And I have to tell you, it is absolutely wonderful here. I mean, just smell that fresh London. You know, with all the horse-drawn cabs around in this period, you never really think about what kind of stench that could create. Uh, no, seriously. My eyes are starting to water. Okay, well, no mind. At least right here, right now, there is no COVID-19 coronavirus. It just doesn't exist in this time period. So I am completely safe. No diseases whatsoever to worry about. Excuse me? Cholera. I see. Oh, well, I'm sure it's just, hmm? Typhoid? Really? And smallpox. Scarlet fever. Rubella? And finally, I got this! That is Matt. He's an incredible drummer from the incredible band Nowhere Slow. Now listen, people, the second this crisis is over, get back out and please support live music. Go see Nowhere Slow. They're always around Northeastern Pennsylvania and they do not disappoint. Back to One Hops and Road Stops right here on WYLN TV 35. Now, some places are still open, like Krugel's Georgetown Deli, um, Party Beverage in Cunningham. And many restaurants are open, too. So please, please, I beg of you, please don't cook one or two nights a week and go for takeout. Do a curb service. Uh, call the restaurant and, and see, you know, what their hours are. See if they're open and support them because these businesses right now, they need your help. We all need your help right now. We all need, we're all in this together. So with that said, this is Mike and Andrea. They run a Facebook page called Mike's Humble Home Cooking and More. Check it out. What we've been doing is really not uh, a real lot because we're trying to keep ourselves distant from everything. In other words, you know, they're... I look at it as, you know, I don't go to the store too much. I don't want to crowd anybody. I don't want to be crowded. Um, but we made uh, a video last weekend where I made uh, beef uh, and mushrooms with uh, bow ties and gravy. Uh, a nice, simple meal in a crock pot. You don't have to sit and babysit. You make it. We have it on there for you if you'd like to check it out at Mike's Humble Home Cooking and much more. Uh, remember to like and share share and follow the page. Uh, I know what I'm doing in the meantime. Oh, you're drinking a little vino, and yes, I'm having a little bit of beer. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everyone. Stay safe. Stay safe. But uh, getting back, so we do some highlights or some simple cooking. We're not going to do nothing technical. My favorite thing to do is harass you on camera. And you do I'm well. very good at and it. You're, and right. For those of you who... Have never seen it. It's worth the it's worth the check. It's worth the look. <laughs> and uh, it's funny sometimes. And it's like I said, it's uncut, unedited. So the videos are a little long. You can always hit the fast forward button and go to the parts that are necessary. 
There's a lot of tomfoolery going on. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. Uh, just please, everybody, be safe. Be mindful. Look over your neighbors. Yes. Keep an eye on them. And please take care of yourself. And uh, we're all in this together, and we'll get through this together. And, Jeff, thanks for asking us to do this uh, vignette. It was a pleasure of ours to do it. Thank you so very much. And uh, we love your show because we've checked some stuff out. And that's Wine Hops and Road Stops. Love the name. It's a great gig. Great show. Cheers. Take care, everybody. Cheers. Be safe out there. And finally, I leave you with my good friend Paul Yank and his kids marching through the woods, getting some fresh air. Because remember, you can still go outside, guys. You don't have to stay in. It's a beautiful day out. Go outside. Breathe in the fresh air. Just remember, social distancing. Stick around your house. You know, don't put yourself in harm's way if you don't have to, okay? Thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll see you again because we're going to shoot another one of these because um, I got a feeling in two weeks this, uh, this won't be over. We'll be still here. So... Be merry, be happy, and stay safe. We'll see you again on Wine Hops and Road Stops. I don't know what I've been told. I don't know what I've been told. Quarantine is getting old. Quarantine is getting old. We eat all day and we eat all night. We eat all day, we eat all night. My skinny jeans are getting tight. My skinny